here and we can get started with a little cocktail half hour, happy half hour. Welcome everybody to our virtual donor appreciation. This is really exciting. You are making history um, because this is our first virtual donor appreciation. My name is Katie Kevorkian and I'm the Associate Director of Development at CEF and I'm gonna be helping out with the audio visuals tonight. And if you have any issues or you need technical support, please use the chat feature. And I'm also going to show right now, you can also uh, text this number. This is my number. It's 213-841-0118 if you need any tech support during the program. So uh, unfortunately, I can't take calls during the program. We're using my phone as to, commu to communicate as well. But if you have any issues, you can... Uh, contact me there or use the chat feature. That's the fastest way to reach the host and just go ahead and message the host using the chat feature. Uh, and any uh, concerns you have, we're going to respond as soon as possible. Johnny's also here to help. Johnny, can you please introduce yourself? Welcome, everyone. Nice to see everyone virtually. I'm excited for this bingo. That's for <laughs> sure. Uh, if you guys have any technical issues, as always, just type them in the chat feature and I'll be able to assist you as best as we can. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We've also got Sandra Garcia, our communications and graphic design coordinator and a CEF alumna here today helping out. Sandra is our security and bouncer. Sandra, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> Everyone, good afternoon. As she said, I will be the Zoom bouncer. So please have your first and last name ready at the door. Don't <laughs> With that, with that, I'd like to welcome our host tonight. He's the president of the Board of Trustees of the Catholic Education Foundation. It's Tim Smith. Thank you, Katie. And tonight we're going to get a glimpse of a program that's all done. Everybody's at home. And uh, uh, we've learned a lot of things in these last few months. And uh, Katie and the staff have, uh, are doing wonderful things at home for CEF. I did think, I, I think I, I will start by giving the 10 reasons a virtual donor appreciation uh, event isn't so bad after all. <laughs> Number 10, no heavy traffic and one hour drives to get here. Number nine, drinks you mix for yourself are always better than the ones served by someone else. <laughs> Eight, no one notices uh, if you order a second or third drink. Oh, I, I knew you'd like that, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Seven, you can wear Levi's and flip-flops and no one's going to throw you out. Six, you will not be out late tonight. Five, no cooked carrots on your dinner plate. Four, no cheesecake for dessert when you were hoping for a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> Number three, no waiting for valet parking to bring your car up afterwards. <laughs> Number two, your bedroom is just a few steps away. <laughs> And number one, we now have an extra $18,000 to spend on our students and their families. Hey. There you go. So those are the top 10. I had a couple others, but I think they were a little tacky. So I didn't do those. Uh, I'm happy to have an old friend here uh, uh, tonight with us for the cocktail session. And he's only old in the sense we've known each other a long time. And that's Father Matt Elsa. Father Matt uh, attended uh, St. Francis High School in La Cunada, and he has served there in many capacities, uh, as well as being president of uh, St. Francis High School. Did a wonderful job there. And he also uh, has had, became the provincial minister for the Capuchins after that. And he's held positions in a lot of different things in terms of in formation, uh, vocation director, marriage and family counselor. That, uh, that's when he started losing his hair. And, uh, but over the years, uh, he's been so devoted to every ministry that he's been involved in. 
He took a sabbatical in northern Mexico before returning to serve as pastor of Old Mission San Inez and now serves as the pastor of St. Lawrence of Brindisi in Watts. Uh, and I suspect if you asked him, this may be his favorite assignment. Uh, he's a wonderful educator and a wonderful pastor. And I thought, uh, Father Matt, if you could uh, perhaps start out by giving us a brief history on St. Lawrence of Brindisi Parish and the school. Well, thanks, Tim, and welcome, everybody. It's, a, it's an honor to be with you and to, to um, share really what I believe is the heart of Watts, which is St. Lawrence of Brindisi Parish, which obviously includes a school grades <clears throat> TK through eight. Um, we are literally in the heart of Watts. Um, I happen to be in a CVS uh, drugstore, literally on the other side of our property, and a very, um, an elderly um, African-American woman, very nicely dressed, came up to me and said, <laughs> looking at me, he said, may I ask where you live? And I said, I'm a Catholic priest. I was in my habit. And I said, I, I'm at St. Lawrence of Brindisi here in, in Watts. She says, what's your address? And I said, 10122 Compton Avenue. And she looked at me and she smiled and said, honey, you live in the heart of Watts. <laughs> so I believe we not only live in the geographical heart of Watts, but in the emotional and spiritual heart of Watts. Um, the, this parish was um, established in 1908. The Capuchins were given possession of the parish in 1922. And in 1924, along with the Notre Dame sisters, we opened our school. So we have had a, um, a, a school grades at that time, grades one through eight, double grade since 1922. Um, Watts has changed significantly over the years. Right now, the, uh, the parish is 98% is Latino, um, and the other 2% um, make up the uh, African-American and Caucasian. It's interesting, the school is 93% Hispanic um, and multiracial, 3%, uh, and the other percentage is that of African-American. So the Latino co community is has established its, its roots here in the parish now for the past, oh, probably 20, 25 years. Um, so we have had the privilege of, of ministering, of stewarding this parish since um, 1922. And through it all, it has been the, um, the flagship of, for the Capuchin province and our work with the poor. And truly, as, as, um, as, as Tim mentioned, um, it has become my favorite ministry. My love for the poor really began when I was provincial and I spent a good deal of time in Mexico. Um, everything from riding on mules in the Sierra with our friars, visiting the indigenous communities, to um, oh, having the opportunity to visit different areas of the poor in South America, Vietnam, India, Indonesia. Um, and that, really put me in touch with my love for the poor in a way that my ministries previous to that hadn't. There is a, a pastoral poor in the, um, in the old, in the Santinez Valley near uh, Old Mission Santinez, but here you have the urban poor and it's a very different experience. And again, I'm a newcomer to this, so I cannot claim to uh, be able to, um, you know, um, write a book on any of this. It's, it's just based on my personal experiences um, during my six years as provincial and my five years since then. So um, we have, as a parish, um, we have truly leaned forward during this, this, um, this uh, pandemic. Uh, we closed the doors of the church and the friars immediately went out into the streets. We carried the Blessed Sacrament and a monstrance and we plotted out the different neighborhoods of our parish and we simply walked the streets with the Blessed Sacrament, someone ringing a bell, someone carrying a candle and a sign saying, we're praying for the community. And we did this at least three times a week. And by the middle of June, we had walked through probably 95% of the neighborhoods. And the impact that we had both within the Latino community as well as with the African-American community was palpable. I mean, um, 
the Latinos would come out on their porches, they would kneel, they would honk if they were driving by, they would get out of their cars, they would get in the gutters, they would kneel down, they would ask for a blessing. The African-American community, um, you would hear um, comments like, um, praise be Jesus, Jesus is Lord, we believe in, in the same God, thank you so much for being on the streets with us. So we have, we, we took to the streets in a very significant way. And as you know, it's one thing to drive through a neighborhood. It's another to walk through it. And with the Latino community, when you walk, you really do um, put yourselves in their shoes because in so many ways, whether it's here or when they, where they've come from, walking is a way of life. So it's put us in touch with the people in a very unique way. Um, I could go on and on about that. I don't know, my, uh, Tim, if you want to direct any of my qu comments in particular. Uh, can let's I start, talk about. Can I, can I can I call some bingo yes. numbers and get <clears throat> us started? First number is B one. B one. And our second number is I nineteen. I nineteen. And if anybody says bingo right now, we'll know you're lying. So. <laughs> oh, 63. Oh, 63. And oh, 64. This is random. I promise. <laughs> I, 28. I, 28. G, 59. G59. All right, let's get back to Father Matt and we'll call a few more in a minute. Okay. Uh, Father Matt, uh, let's talk about uh, how you go about educating people. And you're, you're used to, uh, prior to this, uh, educating students at St. Francis, which has uh, uh, somewhat of a mixture of uh, 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 in terms of affluence and, and the poor, uh, can you run a school that can really do a great job uh, in Watts? Absolutely. And it only comes with the help of people like the donors from the Catholic Ed Foundation, as well as other foundations. But when the COVID virus hit and we closed our doors, we felt that this was an opportunity for us in conjunction with Catholic School Collaborative, Ellen Holton is the director, to reinvent a Catholic school for the community of Watts. Catholic schools basically have had the same model, you know, since the, well, probably the 50s, maybe even before that. Um, this gave us a clean slate. And so we decided that we were gonna create a Catholic school that met the, that met the needs and challenges of the students here, here in Watts. And so what we did was in April, our principal, her name is Alicia Camacho, who's always worked with the poor, grew up with the poor, and is one incredible um, uh, principal, probably one of the best I've ever seen, um, had always had the dream of being able to create a, um, a school that reflected uh, an educational in institution in more affluent areas. Um, she realized that in order to do that, you had to accommodate certain things that were, were, were a part of, of a community such as Watts, which is you had to emphasize social emotional learning because of the impact of the violence, domestic as well as physical. Um, there needed to be what they called growth mindset, which, which helped people, helped the students to get a sense that um, they had the ability to go beyond what they see around their, um, in their uh, in their circumstances. Um, we wanted to use an adaptive, um, accelerated software that would, that would assess the needs of a student when they went online and then created the problem or the issue or the reading material that everyone was reading, but it was individualized so that they started at a base in which they could achieve some success. And that as they achieved success, they in turn felt good about that and the computer then automatically the software moves them to the, um, to the next level of learning. This allowed us also to put our students in grade bands or sometimes those pods or villages. So we've grouped 
grades one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. And what we've done is we've put those students that lead a little bit more extra help in, in one group, those that are a little more accelerated in their learning in another. And by way of this adaptive software, have been able to do individualized and personalized learning like you would see in these private academies in more affluent areas. Um, this allowed for this differentiated instruction then. So we no longer have teachers who are doing preps for five and six different lessons, but rather they're teaching to their fullest potential because they're teaching in their area of expertise. And finally, we clearly needed an extended day. So we have become, when we're able to do this in, in, in the um, full bore in the model that we would like, we now have, we do have two variations obviously, um, we are going to be what I would call what used to be the full service bank. So it's the extended day. We will we start at 7.30 in the morning and students will be fed three meals. And for those who wish, um, students can be picked up at 5.30. Now, what we will do is we will finish the school day officially at 2.45. If parents need to pick their students up because they need them for, you know, um, daycare needs, they can. They, those that would like to stay can stay until 4.15 and that go, will allow them to be involved with a learning lab. Um, and I should say that first, and also allow them to do their homework. So the teachers will work with the students to do their homework. So when the student goes home at 4.15, if that's what the parent elects, they will have no homework. So there will be no extra headache on the part of the parents. Should the student, the parent decide that they wanted their son or daughter to be there until 5.30, then we have um, another additional lab that allows a more creative approach to using a, basically a, a STEM method of adaptive, adaptive software. So the concept of an extended day, potentially for communities such as ours is from 7.30 to 5.30. It helps with daycare. We know in this area that violence increases when students are out of school between the hours of 3.30 and 5.30. This keeps the kids off the streets, engaged and um, in, a very much, in a very productive and engaging, engaging way. Um, so we've called this the Brindisi model, um, St. Lawrence of Brindisi or Brindisi, however you choose to pronounce it, is a Capuchin. He's a doctor of the church, a brilliant um, um, scripture scholar, ambassador, um, missionary. And so we've used that as sort of the, the tagline, the, the Brindisi model in Watts. And of course, there are two other variations on this, um, given the situation in which we find ourselves. But Students basically engage with the teacher for a period of time. Then they go to a lab in which they have an instructional coach and they continue to work with them. And that's rotated throughout the course of the day. So it's a totally different way of, of doing Catholic education, um, at least in this community and gives the parents um, a greater sense of relief. The importance of the Catholic Ed Foundation is critical. You not only provide um, support uh, for a student, you not only teach a student, but you influence a family. And not only that, you don't just influence a family, you make a difference in a neighborhood. So there is an, you know, it's that ripple effect that goes out from one student to a family to an entire neighborhood. And with the friar's engagement with the, with the uh, people, um, by our walking, um, uh, we made site visits to families prior to looking at this model so that we engaged them to see what would they need. Um, would they need something as simple as a desk and a chair in order to place a study? You know, you can imagine you find different, um, different experiences in places that could be a small home, it could be an apartment, or it could be a converted garage. Um, you know, as a side note, you know, we had a family who their 12 year old um, uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. And where did they uh, uh, quarantine him? In the car. 
because they had no space in this one, which their dwelling, which was basically a converted garage. So education is critical. It not only touches the mind, it touches the heart. It makes a difference in the family. And then it touches the entire neighborhood. And we were particularly concerned about um, losing students at the in June, you know, because if everybody's doing long distance, why not go down to the local public school? So what we did was we offered a virtual summer camp, Camp St. Lawrence. It was free of charge. And the idea was to say thank you to our parents for the extra work that they were doing in order to learn about Google Platform, Seesaw, turning on a computer for some of them, and you know, attending to their student, their son or daughter, which was difficult because, you know, um, many of our parents just um, don't have that have had that opportunity. It also was a proactive means of some marketing to show them that we were going, to, we couldn't do some of the things that we normally would do because we couldn't gather people together as you normally would as a community. So it was to show them that we were still interested. And we used a program developed by Stanford called um, Redbird. It's a STEM program. And it was a creative experience in which kids would build igloos in the Antarctic. They would be on a, sh a spaceship to go to Mars. And through the this, this STEM, you know, um, science, technology, engineering, and math would be engaged in a very creative way. We increased our, um, our summer school program enrollment by 75%. So those are the things that we are constantly looking to lean forward, both by way of a parish and the faith life, um, as well as by way of education, because without people like you and Catholic Ed Foundation, um, without your wonderful support, primarily first your prayers, that will always be your greatest gift. You're all, it will always be your greatest gift. And then, you know, your financial support augments that all the more and gives us the opportunity to do things that we'd never be able to do here in a community of Watts. Um, I don't know if you want to do bingo or One. can't just keep talking. <laughs> Let me call a couple numbers. I'm going to see what we do. I also got through my chat, um, Father Man, I got some questions for you. So maybe we can hit some okay. of those too. Sure. All right. Is that a new one? G59? We already called that. All right. Well, G59. I18. Got I18. O73. Jim has a bingo before doing a straight bingo. Can I see oh. it? Jim, let's see it. Mm. Hold it up. You know, I all almost right, all right. It. Can we give it to somebody <laughs> else? <laughs> let's wow. see. Let's see this. Oh. Woo, woo. All right, we got our first bingo winner. <laughs> All right, congratulations to Jim Sarney. All right. Um, and now I want to ask um, Father Matt a couple questions I got in the chat here. Um, how's enrollment been holding up this year at the school? Our, our enrollment has been good. Um, we were at 300. We're at two, um, excuse me, we were at at 310 when we closed our doors we are at 295 right now wow yeah we we did all right um our cost to educate let's see our our tuition is uh 2500 the actual cost to educate is 4878 so there's a gap that we have of uh 2378 per student but we have maintained our our um, enrollment very well in fact we've been getting a few more people We've taken out an ad in El Aviso, which is a local magazine here. We've added large banners to the side, the, 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 the wall of the school, uh, the school that faces uh, Century and Compton. And we are using social media to say, we still have, um, you know, we can still take another 10 students and we do have scholarships. How good is that? Yeah, we've been blessed. I got, I got a one more question. Is that okay? Yeah. I think we got time. Uh, since the school meets so many more needs than education, how are you doing this? How are you meeting those needs remotely? Well, um, 
clearly the educational component is being done by way of, of, um, of technology. Um, we were fortunate in that Alicia Camacho, our principal, three weeks before we had to close our doors, read the tea leaves and sent a survey out and asked the parents, how many of you do not have a computer and how many of you do not have internet? When we learned that information and then we closed our doors, we were able to, uh, at that point, we had enough iPads and Chromebooks for each student. So when we reopened, we closed on a Friday, we reopened on a Wednesday, we did not send um, packets of information, we went live. Um, the Archdiocese has a program on their um, uh, Chromebooks there's a sprint package. So those that did not have internet were able to connect by way of satellite. So the, the technology has helped us. In fact, over the summer, we were given a, a lovely grant and we uh, were able to purchase um, these cameras that allow a teacher to have students uh, both in a classroom, um, in their homes and Zoom, and the teacher can be in third place or in any of those other two places. So we have really been pretty far along with that. And, and all of our, all of our um, academic classes are through you know, adaptive um, software. The, the, we still continue to partner with the, the um, County of Los Angeles and we are a site for distribution of food. So we help with three meals a day and they're starting that again. And we are a drive-through and we provide the volunteers. Um, the social emotional learning, we have a couple teachers that are dedicated to calling and touching base with students to see how they're doing and talking to their parents. One of the things that I do is, is I, just start, I just start calling parents and asking how they're doing. Um, how is their student doing? What's the, what sort of, you know, what are the challenges in, in the house? So it's not like we were able to do before through a, um, a program where we had a, um, uh, a social worker and two caseworkers who worked with individuals um, and their families, but we have been reaching out in a way to show them that we are still interested in, in their emotional, social, and religious um, uh, aspects of their lives. But it's been much more challenging, much more challenging. And, and I have to say this, um, we have a total of six masses on a Sunday plus two live streamed. The six masses are outside and one is in English, but the other six in Spanish and we draw at least 150 people. As a result right. of that, um, we are inviting the parents to call us, at, tell us are there problems, are there difficulties? We also have broken up our ministries in, into groups and ask them to, um, to do some calling and touch base with families um, as well as parishioners to keep people together. It, as the Archbishop has said, it was easy to close our doors, but it's much harder to open them. And when it comes to the social emotional component, which these kids deal with by way of the violence, it is all the more challenging. Thank you very much. This is uh, fascinating. And uh, uh, what a school. How, uh, one brief question. How many of them go to Catholic high school? How many of your so, students would you say? So 90, 92% go to Catholic high school, predominantly Verbum Day, um, uh, St. Mary's Academy. We also have some that will go to Notre Dame Academy. We have some that will go to uh, uh, Bishop Connedy. Um, we have a smattering every few years that will go to Cathedral or Loyola. Um, those that don't go to Catholic school, those tend to go to magnet schools, the medical magnet school down the street, Drew King, or the, the performing arts uh, at Cal State LA. And then um, some just don't go because they can't get the funding for, uh, for tuition. Well, congratulations, really wonderful work. Well, thank you for all that all of you are doing. As I said, you not only help a student, you not only help a family, but you touch an entire neighborhood here in Watts. And these neighborhoods are smaller and you can access those doors very easily. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to travel very far. No. 
All right. All right. It's 633 and you know what time that is. It's about time we got started with our program, I think. Yeah. Uh, Father Matt, um, could you open us in prayer, please? I can. God is always in our midst, but it's moments like this that give us a chance to appreciate how good God is. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Lord, our God, as we gather virtually to celebrate the lives and families and donors of the Catholic Education Foundation, we know that you are indeed real and alive in our lives every day. Your presence animates us in a way that goes beyond the Internet. It's the grace that allows us to show the world who you are. In the midst of this COVID pan pandemic, we realize that our students and their parents are impacted all the more emotionally, spiritually, and financially. We ask you to bless our, our event this evening. We thank you for the gifts that the men and women who are part of the Catholic Edu Education Foundation support. We thank you for the donors that continue to believe in the gift of education for those who are in greatest need. We ask you to bless our Archbishop and the work that he does both as Archbishop of this Archdiocese as well as President of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. We ask that you continue to guide him as he shoulders the responsibilities for the Catholics throughout this nation as well. Bless us now and always the prayers that we make, those remain in the silence of our hearts. And we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, it's time to introduce, well, first of all, I want to say this event each year is really designed to say thank you and hopefully deliver you some messages that uh, let you know that your commitment to the Catholic Education Foundation is very valuable to a lot of people. And so we thank you, but boy, the, the people that are, receive your gifts are also very thankful. Every time you have a parents, uh, at the end of the year, when we could do these things, we would have the parents bring the kids and they're so appreciative of the Catholic Education Foundation and what it does for them. It provides the opportunity to learn the faith and to go further with their education. Uh, can we introduce the virtual choir from Dolores Mission School in Boyle Heights?
How good was that? <laughs> I think our next uh, speaker is the chairman of the board of trustees <laughs> and it's Archbishop Gomez. Uh, I've been working for him for a few years now and he's a good boss. <laughs> and it's uh, one of the joys of my job is uh, the friendship that uh, I have developed with with the Archbishop. Uh, the Archbishop came to us from San Antonio, where he was Archbishop. He was installed in March of 2011. Uh, he was elected Vice President of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops in November of 2016, and then was last November was elected president of that conference of bishops, Catholic bishops. He thought that uh, 2020 would be a very busy, busy year in that capacity. Little did he know what was in store for the archdiocese, the parishes, and the schools in 2020. Um, I want to, uh, I'm happy to present Archbishop Gomez. Thank you, Tim. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for your words. I mean, I, I think we're working together well, aren't we? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Your Excellency. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great to be with all of you this evening and, and especially to thank you for everything that uh, that you do for the Catholic Education Foundation and for the children and the families in Catholic schools. Uh, Father Matt, thank you for your presentation. I think that was much better than when anything I can say this evening. So thank you very much. Uh, I think it, I, I just wanna say that uh, getting together with all of you is a blessing for me. And I think blessing for all of us as we give thanks to God for uh, all his, uh, his grace during this challenging time. Uh, it is a very challenging time for all of us and for, for our whole world and for our country. So I think it is important for us to find a way to be united as we are doing it this evening. So um, I found these uh, beautiful words of Pope Francis about Catholic schools. He said, Catholic schools, which always strive to join their work of education with the explicit proclamation of the gospel are a most valuable resource for the evangelization of culture. So what we do in Catholic schools, as you know, is, uh, is uh, uh, help the next generation to have uh, academic excellence, Catholic values, and, uh, and they are the ones really that are gonna be a most valuable resource for the evangelization of culture that is so important in our society at this time. So uh, what you do helping uh, so many families through the Catholic Education Foundation is a great blessing for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese, for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and for the, for the entire Catholic Church uh, in our country and in the world. So I'm very grateful to all of you for that. Um, it, is, um, it is just a, a, an amazing reality that we have in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Sometimes I feel that we take it for granted. But right now we have the largest school system in the country, uh, Catholic school system in the country. There is nothing similar to this anywhere in the Southwest of the United States. So it is a great, great, blessing that and, and i'm so grateful to all of you for helping us uh, to make sure that uh, the uh, catholic schools are successful in the archdiocese so uh, uh, again thank you very much uh, i hope that we can get together in person soon <laughs> and in the meantime we continue to pray for one another and be together we have a uh, we had just a, we got a meeting um, every year the last Monday of September, we have what we call the Presbyteral Gathering. That is a gathering of all the priests of the Archdiocese. And this uh, was uh, last week. So we prepared this little video that I wanted to share with you that you can see uh, what uh, the Archdiocese and the church in, in Los Angeles, you all, and all of us are doing for our people at this time. 
So, uh, Tim, if it is okay with you, I can uh, we can uh, present the video right now. COVID-19 has changed the way we live and worship. We've gone through seasons. Masks cover our smiles and require distance robs us of the gift of embrace. God created us to be in relation and this global pandemic seems to pull us further away from each other. The family of God in LA has responded, ushering in a world of virtual worship, our archdiocese, along with our parishes and our schools, brought our faith to life along the digital highways. Our videos reached over 6.8 million views and our archdiocesan social outreach is soaring. We work to create online spaces where our faithful can engage with the global church. We've worked to help people understand the power of spiritual communion. We brought what was happening in Rome into the homes of our families and young adults who were searching for consolation. We tried to show that we are one family of faith and that no distance can separate us from God's love and each other. In Archbishop's role as president of the USCCB, he carries the extra burden of leading our country closer to Jesus. He has taken that responsibility seriously and found ways to unite our country in prayer. Our Hearts to Serve campaign, in collaboration with the Knights of Columbus, saved several of our food pantries and brought nutritious meals to those in need. Our Department of Catholic Schools not only shifted to new methods of online serving, but also found creative ways to feed and support our poorest children. For the first time in our archdiocesan history, the pandemic class of 2020 was ordained to the priesthood in an outside sacramental celebration. Our young people gathered together for a virtual City of Saints. While they weren't gathered at UCLA, they were nonetheless reminded of their unique mission and how much they are loved by God and our local faith community. Families who have lost loved ones carry an extra burden of sadness. Knowing this need, the team at Catholic cemeteries and mortuaries developed prayer experiences and virtual memorial masses. Archbishop Gomez, by way of a virtual town hall, helped people navigate issues of mental illness and ways to navigate this pandemic as a family. Over 11,000 people engaged live for our virtual town hall experience. We have all experienced the challenges that flow from COVID-19. Yes, there is more work to be done, more to do to advocate for the full expression of our faith and living it out in these challenging days. Perhaps this is our Lady of Guadalupe moment, the moment for our families, the domestic church, to rise up and make the Lord's love known. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank you. You are you you all are in my praise in a special way, and as I for, for for your praise for my ministry here in the archdiocese. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing a video like that, we see uh, there are so many ways our church serves the people of Los Angeles that we don't know about, and so many people are involved in that, uh, and uh, we need to really. Uh, go back to our parishes and be supportive because the uh, the parishes are the source of funding for those activities and they're also the source of the people for those activities. So um, this has been a, a good presentation. Most appreciate it. Sure. Appreciate it. We got, don't, don't tell the, my brother the bishops out, out, right? outside of Angeles, but we have the best archdiocese in the country. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, uh, our senior director and superintendent of Catholic schools, Paul Escala. Paul uh, came to us from the Grimway schools. Uh, which is a charter school management organization in, in Bakersfield serving over 1,300 K to 8 
students. Uh, prior to that, he was president and CEO of St. John Bosco High School. He is a product of our Catholic schools. He attended Holy Trinity School in San Pedro, St. John Bosco High School, and LMU before graduating from Cornell. Uh, it's been a busy year for you, uh, more than you ever dreamed of. Uh, you have a wife named Noel. Is her birthday around Christmas? Indeed it is, yes. December 28th. <laughs> <laughs> and two boys, Matthew and William. Uh, Matt is five and William's eight. And a dog named Ginger. Now, what kind of dog has a name like Ginger? Ginger is a, uh, an Akita. Uh, she's a Japanese Akita, and she's uh, she's a red and white, uh, uh, beautiful dog. So uh, seemed appropriate. Well, uh, Ginger must be an important part of your family because it's in your resume. <laughs> so uh, uh, welcome to the donor appreciation uh, event tonight, and uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Archbishop, uh, Father Matt. Uh, and, and, and everyone uh, here, you know, it can't believe it's, it's been a year since I was with you in person. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's, been a, it's been an interesting journey, uh, needless to say. Uh, but uh, God presents himself uh, in so many ways that we just simply don't understand. And I think we are at one of those moments right now where um, we are invited to see Christ in, um, in, in ways that uh, you know, as we go about our day and go about our lives, we don't oftentimes see. And this pandemic um, has certainly been uh, an incredible struggle for so many people, but um, particularly for the poor, particularly for children, um, those who have been more disproportionately affected by uh, this pandemic. And this pandemic forces us to see Christ in the faces of the most needy. Uh, Father Matt in his ministry at St. Lawrence Brindisi, I think really characterizes where he is seeing Christ every day, where we are seeing Christ every day in our schools, in our churches, uh, in so many places. And we are, we are forced to confront uh, you know, Christ in, in a way that I think that uh, really gives us a moment of pause to reflect on what is most important. And I think that's where Christ calls us to really think about what is the most important. And just one takeaway that I've reflected on um, is that it's the important of, importance of one another, which is sort of antithetical to social or physically distancing from one another, but how much we have taken for granted each other and how we cannot do that. And that indeed, as Sarah was saying on the video that Archbishop shared with us, that um, God made us relational. And it's antithetical to think that children for this long of a time have not been together and in person. And believe me, my little boys remind me that every day, um, how much they miss school and how much they miss their friends. We had a, a, just a couple of days ago, uh, my son William's third grade class had what Monsignor Kostelnik at St. Joe's in Long Beach calls mass on the grass. And we had uh, mass on the grass there with all the third graders and siblings and uh, both my boys were able to go and we were together. We were, we were a, a family in faith and we were distant from each other, but we were together. And just for that brief moment of time, it really exemplified how wonderful the gift of Catholic education truly is. And, and how relational we are. And while we're not in person, how the incredible generosity of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people has kept our ministry thriving during this, what seemingly is an impossible time, but everything is possible in Christ. So it's not impossible to think that over 2 million meals have been served at over 40 school sites since the beginning of the pandemic. That's not impossible with Christ because it's been done. It's not impossible to think that over 20,000 devices were deployed to children within 72 hours of this pandemic starting. It's not impossible to imagine that in spite of all the challenges that families have faced, that they have stayed with us in 
our school, that they have stayed with their communities. And yes, we have seen uh, the challenges presented. We have seen families not being able to stay with us. We know that the impression that Christ has left on their hearts, when we are able to come back in person and when we are able to rebuild our nation and our world from this pandemic, they will return back home and we welcome them with open arms. And it's because of the Catholic Education Foundation that we're gonna be in a position to open our doors to them. It's gonna be because of CEF that we're able to welcome them back home. And all of the incredible generosity that you have all displayed and all of those who are with us in spirit tonight, you can rest assured that, that the Ministry of Catholic Schools and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles are being well tended to by our shepherd, Archbishop Gomez, who has made it an absolute priority that our schools not just survive this crisis, but thrive in this crisis and beyond it, because this too shall pass away. We will see the day where our children are back in school together and then we're all back in church together. But between now and then, we need the Catholic Education Foundation to continue its stalwart support of Catholic schools and Catholic families, and all families who attend Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And you've demonstrated that by fruition of your incredible generosity and support. It's helping thousands of children at a distance and now slowly but surely coming back, as we see here in Los Angeles County, TK through two waivers being uh, approved. And that is the Catholic Church. That is Archbishop Gomez leading the advocacy campaign for a safe return to school. Archbishop Gomez leading in Ventura in Santa Barbara to ensure that our children can return back to school, which I'm excited to say that next week, Santa Barbara, uh, will see children K through two to 12 return. And the following week in Ventura, uh, the same there. Uh, longer road to hoe here in Los Angeles County, but we're looking forward to that day as well. So with those remarks and with incredible and hum humble generosity and, and humble thanks, thank you so much for all that you do for the children of this archdiocese who attend our schools. Thank you in support of Father Matt and his ministry at St. Lawrence Brindisi. He's doing incredible things really being able to do things that our friends in the public sector cannot do, who will not do. It is during these times when we look to our faith and look to our church for salvation. We look to Christ and his heart is open to us and his doors are open to us. And we are walking through those doors together. So with that, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and thank you so very much, Tim, for allowing me to share a few remarks tonight. Thank you for your hope, your compassion, and your support for Catholic education. Thank you, Archbishop Gomez, for your leadership through this extraordinarily challenging time. Uh, thank you for the rosary today. It was a beautiful national rosary that Archbishop led, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to more of those moments where we can be together as a faith family. Thank you, and God bless. Thanks, Paul. Wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of hard work this year, and uh, we got good people working on it, doing the work. So it's very refreshing to hear these presentations tonight. Um, uh, we came here also to honor some of our uh, donors, particularly those who have uh, passed milestones. So I'm gonna go to Allison, our CEF Director of Development, and we'll uh, have her make some presentations. And you don't Thank have you, to walk Tim. up to the podium to pick up your award. No, and you should have all already received your awards through the mail. We hope. That was our intention, at least. We have a number of our Catholic school students, both elementary and high school, who have a very special message for all of you. Thank you so much for supporting Catholic education. Thank you for supporting Catholic education. Thank you so much for supporting Catholic education. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving me and my brother a Catholic education. I'd like to thank our donors for providing me and others with a good Catholic education. Thank you so much for giving us a Catholic education. Your financial support is greatly valued and appreciated by me and the students at St. Mary's Academy. It's helped me experience many experiences here 
as legions help me experience the brotherhood we have here. I want to thank the CEF donors for providing me with a great education like the one I'm able to receive at Bishop Conady, Our Lady of Loretto High School. It allows me to come to a beautiful school like here in Salesian. Without your help, we wouldn't have an excellent education and career programs that SMA offers us. Because with your help, we are given the opportunity to develop ourselves that has helped us become young individuals who are driven to making their mark on the world. You provide a safe environment for all of us. It allows me to get my academics to a level that I wouldn't be able to in the public schools in my community. Without your help, we wouldn't be able to become the powerful and intelligent woman we're aspiring to be. Because we receive more hands-on experience in the medical field through our health careers program. I am currently in the process of applying to colleges, and I wouldn't have had faith in myself without CEF by my side. Thank you for supporting so many students, and thank you for believing in me. I just want to thank CEF for giving me the opportunity to study here at Salesian High School and pursue my dream of being a filmmaker, so soon you'll see me at the Oscars. Because without it, we wouldn't have come to know the people who push us to become women of distinction. You are cultivating the next engineers, doctors, lawyers, and most importantly, leaders of this world. It allows us to become independent and powerful women who are capable of doing whatever we put our minds to. With your support, we can do anything. Thank you for all your support. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Bye. I hope that gives you just a little idea of who you're supporting and the mark you're making on the children of the Archdiocese. And with that, um, we would like to go forward and honor our milestone donors and our in memoriam awards. Our milestone donors are those amazing people who have given to CEF over many, many, many years. We'd like to honor them tonight. 30 years of giving Mr. and Mrs. Gilbert J. Shea Jr., 25 years of giving the Honorable Richard J. Reardon, Stephen Auth, and the Auth Family Trust. Twenty years of giving, the William R. and Virginia Hayden Foundation, Mr. H. Thomas Boyle and Mrs. Wendy Lees, Mr. and Mrs. Sam L. Navarro. For 15 years of giving, the Steinmetz Foundation, Mr. and Mrs. Alex N. Chavez Sr., the R. W. Zant Company, Mrs. Gretchen A. Wayne, Mr. and Mrs. William F. Mills, and 10 years of giving, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis M. Freher, and Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Canole. Thank you, thank you from all of us for your very faithful giving. Many of you are here tonight and we want you to be acknowledged and honored for what you have done for CEF. Now on to our In Memoriam Awards. These honor CEF donors, supporters, wonderful friends who have passed on this year. We'd like to honor Mr. Roland F. Herbst, and I believe his son Philip is here this evening with us. Thank you to him for his long and faithful support and to his wife, Gloria. Mr. Ivan J. Houston, a longtime supporter of CEF. And I believe his daughter, Kathleen Berryman may be with us tonight. Mr. Franklin G. Costlin and his wife, Kathleen McCarthy is here with us tonight with her daughter, Kathleen Duncan. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us. And Dorothy A. Olson, known to many of you as Dickie, and her daughter and son-in-law, Patty and Mike Smith are with us tonight, and her granddaughter, Megan Bender, and her children. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, her granddaughter, Carolyn Snyder, and her grandson, Will Smith. 
these are people who are very special to CEF and they will always be in our hearts and our memories. Thank you all very, very much. Katie, if I can do one more quick thank you, I'm, I'm taking over here for a minute. I'd like to thank Henry Matson, who is among us. He's a member of our development committee. And we have Henry to thank for the wonderful party boxes you received. And so I think Henry deserves a round of applause from all of us. Thank Please you. enjoy My the pleasure. glasses. Henry, you are wonderful. Thank you thank so, you. so very much. Yeah. All right. Tim, I think it's about time that uh, we announce our winners for our for one so we had a winner in bingo and that was um that was jim sarney so you'll be getting a gift in the mail from us uh from wine country gift baskets and now i'm about to do a drawing for our door prize and so you can see that this is completely randomized because it's called randomnamepicker.com so it sounds random <laughs> And there's your names floating around, and it is Tom Boyle. Let's give Tom a <laughs> round of applause. So, Tom, you'll be receiving a gift from us. So, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Hi, Tom. I'm going to hand it back to you, Tim. Is it back to me? Do, is there is there a prize for last place in bingo? I only had one number drawn. You get to keep the bingo card. Oh, thank you. It's it's kind of a fancy one. <laughs> thank you. Um, just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, uh, this is uh, I, I do want to make a couple. Of, uh, number one, we have four new trustees that we are so fortunate to have come aboard. And that's Father Brian Nunez, uh, moderator of the Curia and Vicar General. He took over for Monsignor Albert Behuth, who uh, worked hard at, for five years in that position. It's no easy position, especially in these circumstances. And we have Ryan Cano, uh, Charles Gaffney, and Colleen Welsh. So we really added some strength to our board and we're sure happy to have them. I want to give a special thanks to the event support team. Uh, Johnny Munoz, Sandra Garcia, Denise Chacon, and Lorna Sains. The, the, and uh, I want to thank uh, Katie. She is a wonderful, we found out she was a theater arts major in, uh, in college. And she really has put it to work in a very effective way. And we thank you for your work. And Allison, thanks so much. And thanks to the Archbishop for being here this evening and uh, all of you for participating in this. We truly are fortunate and we hope that our appreciation uh, is uh, evident to all of you. Uh, the program is, ended, uh, we will have Father Met. He's worked overtime tonight. Oh, we'll have Archbishop close. With oh, the Archbishop. Good. Archbishop, <laughs> would you like to offer a closing prayer? Sure. Just a blessing. But uh, I also want to thank my brother Bishop for being, <clears throat> I think, Bishop uh, Wilkerson, uh, Bishop Aklan, Bishop uh, Mark, uh, is there so thank you for uh, being with us this evening uh, and thank you for all your ministry here in the Archdiocese uh, so I, we are supposed to finish now so it's sorry I just give a blessing no yes please may Almighty God bless each one of you uh, your families may Almighty God bless all uh, the uh, Benefactors of the Catholic Education Foundation, the members of the board and the families, and also all the, uh, um, uh, the teachers, the staff, the, and the students and the parents of the children in Catholic schools. And during this challenging time, we always trust in the grace of God and the presence of God in our lives. 
and in our families. Today, we especially honor Our Lady of the Rosary, even this, uh, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary today, and also the Month of the Rosary. May our Blessed Mother continue to intercede for us that we can always be grateful to God and uh, share the beauty of our faith with the people of our time. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy everybody. the rest of the evening. Feel free to hang out if you want to st st stay and hang out with us. You're more than welcome. I'll leave, I'll leave the room open if you want to chat. Thank you, everyone. We very much appreciate you being with us tonight. And thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.